Hey there, Stars fans. I have a feeling you are feeling pretty good right about now, just like we are coming off of a dominating win like that from your Dallas Stars on the Chicago Blackhawks. Stars win four to nothing. It is game 35, and if you didn't know, this is the Two Brothers Mic'd Up show. We sit down, we play a game of NHL, you know, we talk about what we liked, what we didn't like, and then we bring it to you in video form and audio form. Like always, we start off each video with predictions that we had in last video, so always be sure to stick around because uh, we usually give scores for how we think the game is going to go. Quinn, you like to score for Dallas of 4-3. to three. You like to score for Chicago for 5-2. to two. I honestly thought it was going to be a pretty high-scoring game. I like Dallas for a 6-5 game and then Chicago for a 5-4 game. I thought it was going to be pretty much of a shootout. You know, I, you know, yeah. Dallas was on a back-to-back. -back. We didn't know if their legs were going to be under them, but I was completely wrong, and I will happily say I was wrong because the Stars came out and they were blazing in this game. I mean... The first period, I thought both teams played very well. Chicago looked like Chicago. You know, they looked like a team that this that this Dallas Stars team needs to beat. You know, they they were they were handling the puck so smoothly. I don't think we've seen a team that moves the puck that handles the puck as well as Chicago does. Now Dallas was looking great too. And in the first period, I mean, we outshot the Hawks 7-3. to three, So, you know, it was a good game. And to, to, start, to start the game, it was good. But then we get into the second, and it starts kind of tilting towards Chicago in, uh, in the second because they, out, they outshot Dallas 14-8. to eight. But in that first, you know, 10 minutes of the second period, you know, they, they tried to test... Uh, Dallas as much as they possibly could because in the first period they had two power plays. Didn't even get a shot on net. We had a ton of block shots. Jamie Benn playing out of his freaking mind you know blocking shots, playing as well as he has. You know I think this has to be a game that everyone perks their, their ears up just for this. Let's talk about Quinn, how did you feel before the game and how did you feel after the game? I felt a little little moment of uneasiness, you know. This is Chicago versus Dallas, first of, of one meeting, or first of five meetings. And you come in expecting to see a lot of scoring, a lot of talent, a lot of skill on both these teams. You get to the first period, and we get the go-ahead goal in the second period. But then it starts. You start seeing Dallas just starting to play panic. You see Chicago relentlessly coming after them, and I, for for a good amount of time there, thought it was going to be a one nothing game. Little yeah. did we know that the floodgates were going to open as soon as Sharp netted his what was this, his twelfth, like fifteen seconds into the period on Crawford. Yeah, it was about eleven so seconds tonight. in, and then just. Every Chicago didn't know what to do. They looked like a house league mini might team out there. Yeah, before the game, I was a little anxious. I mean, you 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 have to be whenever you have the Blackhawks coming into town, especially with the Blackhawks in town. You know, the arena is always kind of split fifty fifty with Chicago fans. But I think. As the game went along, it really started to look like, you know, this Dallas team just might be the real deal. Granted, we're saying that a lot here lately, but when the game started chugging along and after we got that first uh, first goal by Jason Spezza, that's just how my feelings could turn just like that, especially with how well the stars you know weathered that storm in the second period with how the hawks were coming at them you know we get goals from spezza sharp 
Sevier, who hasn't scored in like 17 games. And then we get... Uh, uh, who was the fourth goal? Oh, Yanmark. He gets it off that yeah, redirect, yeah. that redirection in the third. And this is the second straight game that the Stars have beaten the Blackhawks for nothing. You know, the last game that they played in uh, last season against the Blackhawks, we beat them for nothing. And so, and the Stars for the second straight game score three goals in the third period. They. They are. They have proved time and time again that the Dallas Stars are the best third period team in this game. Because you know what? Not only do they just find that extra gear, but they will send. They'll they'll sit around, and the Stars can outweigh you. Essentially, you know, they'll they'll let you bring all that you have. But then the stars will kick their gear, their extra gear into you know go time, and that's whenever we see us really just take over the game. Let's talk about the three hawks, and then the one X star that you know comes into this in, in, into this game. So let's talk about Sharp, Oduya, Niemi, and Garbutt. How did you like Sharp Oduya's and Niami's performance? And then let's talk a little about Ryan Garbutt as well. Well, right off the bat, you got to hope that either Sharp or Oduya get a goal in this game. Hell, if it was a close game, Chicago pulls a goal, you hope Niami gets that empty net goal. You really see Sharp playing with determination, you know, playing against your former team. You want to come in and set that presence that you can still play and what, that they're missing out. And same with Oduya. He's playing great defensively. He's making big hits. And then, of course, you get the shutout from the Emmy. It's, it was a good feeling to see them playing at top peak form. It's, it's sad to hear that, you know, you maybe heard Garbage's name maybe oh, like three times the entire night. So it, it was... I was very happy to see how they played. No intimidation shown, and Stars get the win. Yeah, you could definitely tell that Sharp had some jump to his game, and Niemi was seeing the puck very well. But I also want to talk about Ryan Garbutt. I I always kind of liked Ryan Garbutt, even with his you know stupid hijinks that he would kind of do towards the end of like last season and like the season prior but I always thought that Ryan Garbutt always had like a you know sort of tenacity to him something that you know kind of like a battler in a sense like he just seemed like he'd always had some kind of hustle and actually he had that one really good uh chance I think it was in the second period whenever he took a shot on Niemi and then Desjardins you know followed up the rebound so it's kind of uh, it's not bittersweet to see that Ryan Garbutt's playing on the other team because even in the statement they had a statement at the beginning of the game saying how Ryan Garbutt would always kind of you know he had hit, hit an extra gear whenever he would play against the Hawks hoping that uh, their GM and management would kind of notice him you know that's kind of a shitty thing to say to be honest with you but you know, he. I guess he's happy playing in Chicago, and he's he's obviously found a role on that team, unlike Trevor Daly. But he he did have one really good chance, and Garbage still has like I think Ryan Garbage's shot is pretty much underrated. But that's enough about Ryan Garbage. You know, it was kind of nice seeing him back and everything like that, but. Oduya played really, really well. Let me see. Yeah, he played like the player we got, we traded for. Yeah. He, you know, he, he played his defensive game to the T. Yeah, he had he had almost twenty minutes of ice time. I mean, he was he he was noticeable out there. You know, he just like Sharp. I mean, Sharp comes in, gets a goal uh, eleven seconds into the third period because 
we just had another jump that I don't think I mean a lot of uh, the post game interviews that you see from Chicago their reporters were in the locker rooms and they asked did the speed of the stars you know did you did they not anticipate that speed and you saw a lot of them say no uh you know we anticipated their speed we just didn't react i honestly don't think that they reacted all that well to how dallas was coming in i i wanted this one to be a pure feelings style uh discussion and it just felt like the hawks kind of undermined the stars and i kind of feel like that's how it's been for the past couple of seasons and in the beginning yeah i guess you know the hawks really had no reason to really fear the stars but now it looks like a lot of the teams that are kind of undermining the stars are starting to figure out we can't do that anymore so that was my feeling from the game is that it felt like the the hawks just didn't really show their best hand in this game and then the stars said well if you're not going to play us straight up we're going to kick the living hell out of you and we're going to embarrass you on our home ice and we're going to send all those blackhawks fans back <laughs> to the bandwagon for starting those let's go hawk chants here in dallas but Going into the holiday break, what are your feelings, Quinn, for the rest of the season? I know we're not at the halfway mark yet, but we're almost there. I think we're like seven games away, and this is the holiday break. So how are you feeling for the last, uh, for the second half of the season? I want to see this team evolve more defensively. They've already got the offense down. Lord knows they got the offense down. This team needs to start focusing a little bit more on defense. Not much. You know, they're starting to come around. But just that little tweak here, that little tweak there. And this team is ready for a deep playoff contendership. Yeah. You might even see the Dallas Stars versus the Blackhawks. How good would that be of a season? As of series. as of right now, from this game, that would be a hell of a series. I think Hawks and Stars fans are pretty much chomping at the bits right now to see that matchup, to really see how this season for the Dallas Stars, because the Dallas Stars are still on franchise records for the start of this season. So we need that test in the playoffs to see exactly how good we are and how good our goalies are. So I, I, I agree with you full heartedly or wholeheartedly that I, I we need to see another evolution in the second half because our February that's coming up, that is probably the toughest February that we have for any team. I'll put up our February against any other team's uh, schedule. And if anyone out there that is a fan of any other team than the Stars and you want to put up your february against ours bring it because i think ours is the roughest one let's go into the ratings of this game how did you how did you rate this game well the obvious rating to give this team would be an a plus but i'm going to give them an a solely for the fact that the second period they were still shaky they, they still show that they can have some improvements on their line. But it was really hard decision to knock him an A+. Plus. Like I said, they make those little tweaks on defense. They, they settle down a little bit more on their breakout, and this team's unstoppable. Well, unlike you, I completely disagree with what you say, and I gave a rating of A++++ plus 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 because... I think this was their statement game that tells the rest of the NHL, the rest of the league, that you had better not bring your off game playing against the Dallas Stars because uh, the game against Minnesota, I think that was another good indicator that this team doesn't really show much signs of slowing down. And I think 
Niemi establishing his, uh, I think his establishing his role as a legitimate number one. I think after this, after the next weekend against the home and home against the Blues, I think we will have a clear cut number one goalie. But as of right now, in my mind, it's Niemi, and we'll talk. We'll talk more in uh, on goaltending over the weekend whenever we see that. But it was just an all around great game. That's why I gave the rating that I did. The next game, game thirty six, against the Blues. What kind of predictions do you have for that one? I feel that they're both both uh, highest skilled teams. They're both at the top of the, the division in the conference, for that matter. St. Louis is still going to come out with their physically dominating game that they have. They're going to pass the puck to Tarasenko, Steen. They're going to expect them to score. So we need to shut those those two down right off the bat and if we do that and I'm also hoping to see Niemi in that I know you think we should start Kari but I think we should roll with a hot hot goaltender and I like a score of 3-2 to two. Dallas comes on top if the Blues come on top I feel it's because we put Lettinen in and he has another bad showing and it'll be four to one. All right. Uh, yeah, you you said it that in the first game of the home and home, I think Lettinen should start that game. He has three days to get his faculties in order to get his mind right. I think you leave him in for the whole game. You do not take him out. Even if we get beat 7-1, to one, you leave him in there. Because you know what? Some might say, well, why leave him in there if he's getting beat that much? And it'll ruin his confidence. Well, it's not doing anything for his confidence if he's letting in 2-3 goals and then getting yanked out of the first period as well. I mean, he needs to get kicked in the mouth to understand that he needs to play better when he's in net. So, even if we lose... The first game, I still think Kari should be in that game and should play the full 60. Do not take him out. But I like if the Dallas Stars are going to win, they just cruise. They, are, they just cruise off this momentum that they have. I like a score of 3-1 to one for Dallas if they come on top. I like a score of... Uh... Three to one for the Blues if if uh, they come on top. Yeah. So I hope Kari's in net for the first one. I think you know give Niemi that little bit of extra time because he had two rough games. Well, not rough games, but he had two games that he had to be stellar and stand on his head. So let Kari get in there. He'll be fresher, and we'll go from there. So yeah, uh, that's the discussion. You know, we are, it's a short one because, you know, it's the holidays. We know you got some traveling or anything like that going on. So we don't want to bog you down too much. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, give any kind of feedback. You know, let us know what you liked, what you didn't like. Remember, this is for fans, by fans. Help us turn this into something great, and as always, tune in next time.